Take off your khakis, put on your snuggie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no need to Dude, shave. You have to say that. Yeah, you have to say that. <laughs> Brad, that's so good. <laughs> Take off your khakis, put on your snuggie. It is Casual Wednesday, my friends. Welcome to Choose F5. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, this was all you, man. I love it. Let's keep it casual. Yeah, it's all about uh, keeping it casual, right? And yeah, this is the the new normal, I think. That's what it kind of feels like right now, right? We've been in, in this self-isolation for about a, a month and change now. And I think everybody's kind of settling in. At first, it was just kind of crazy. I mean, how could we adapt to this new life? And now... I don't know. I mean, I've been talking to a lot of friends over the weekend and just seeing people talk online and post on Facebook and places like that. And it really does seem like people are adapting. And I know we're adapting here at Choose a Five for everybody who uh, didn't see an episode from us yesterday. I think uh, I think we're hitting hitting a new normal here. Right, Jonathan? Yeah, I think when we went to a daily show for that for that short window, it was because the facts on the ground were changing every single day, right? And for that period, we didn't want to be releasing something that we'd recorded three or four weeks ago that didn't match up to where people were, you know? And so for that period that we did that, that was a grueling process, but I think it was important. And I think now, as you said, I don't know if this is the calm or the calm before the storm, but either way, I'm happy that we made it here. And it appears that the apocalypse has not happened. The zombie apocalypse is staving off for another day. And we're, I think what we could do today with casual Wednesdays is just kind of throw out some ideas, test some theories, have a casual conversation about financial independence, life optimization, financial resilience, and just look at it through the lens of maybe what we're struggling with in our own personal lives and what the community appears to be struggling with. So uh, adapting to the new normal. Yeah. So Jonathan, talking about the kind of the new normal, right? You know, I've talked about on the podcast so many times how much we love Wegmans, our local grocery store here in here in Richmond. And Laura, my wife, loves grocery shopping just generally. It's just kind of like this nice, peaceful part of her week where she takes an hour to herself and goes to the store and really thinks about her meal planning for the week, which she genuinely gets joy out of. And we have not been inside a grocery store, I guess now in almost 40 days, which is, uh, it's a departure. Wow. 40 days. <laughs> yeah. That, right. That's it's, a, a, it's an, that's a significant fraction of the year 2020. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And you know, we had never contemplated using one of those delivery services before. I know there are a bunch, uh, Instacart and shipped are two that I know of right off the top of my head. I know uh, Kroger has their click list, which I think you can pick up curbside. And I don't know, we always, we heard people using them and it made sense, but it, it seemed to make sense at that point in our minds for people who were working nine to five, who had limited time. And Laura's contention was always, you know, I've got the time. I can take the hour, hour and a half for two hours, whatever it may be, and go to the grocery store. But again, the world has changed. And I mean, maybe the calculus of honestly, what makes sense in terms of, do I really want to pay the delivery fee? And I guess the extra little cost per item that I know something like Instacart passes along. But, you know, when I'm thinking in terms of just my own personal finance, and again, Jonathan, we always say personal finance is truly personal. And I'm not trying to say that this is universal advice by any means, but I don't want my wife or myself spending an hour or an hour and a half in the grocery store right now. So that was just not something we were willing to do. So we looked into options and we've actually been using Instacart for the last month and change. And I have to say, I don't know if we're going to go back when, uh, yeah, when this lifts, I mean, Instacart has been phenomenal for us. It's really, it's like, it's actually fun. I have to say, have you ever used it? Uh, yeah, I've used both Instacart and shipped and I've used Kroger's click list as well. And they all perform entirely adequately in the past, you know, in a vacuum, I was like, yeah, I kind of like going grocery shopping. I kind of like going grocery shopping, you know, I'll just, I'll just keep going. I've, I'll make two observations. The first, uh, is that adequate has become amazing, you know, in the last, in the last 40 days, right. What's gone from adequate. And I was like, I have time. I'll just go do it. 
has uh, suddenly become what a benefit that they are offering to society by allowing us to decrease the foot traffic. And then the second half is actually the cost. I thought the, cause you're right. Instacart and some of the others, they actually do add a small premium to uh, the actual cost of the groceries. And so if you are just straight looking at the bottom line and you know how much a lot of us do look at the bottom line, we're like, well, my grocery budget's gone up about five, six, 7%. You know, it's something along those lines, uh, which is, Okay, you know, in, in the past, I would say, well, no, I'm going to get it at the absolute bottom. But I tell you what, if you actually were to look at it, if you were commit to it for like a 40-day period of time, that 5 to 7% is incredibly offset by the fact that you don't pick up the six-pack of Pop-Tarts, right? Or the four or five frozen pizzas that you decided to get or the six or seven things that the grocery store set out for you to grab your attention as you went in and as you went out. You're able to make very logical, rational purchases and while I thought, you know, I would see this five to 7% increase in reality, I've seen an across the board cut of close to 20% on my grocery bill because I'm not getting all the crappy food that I normally get just at that last minute. Right. And I'm not as susceptible to it as, you know, as I, maybe I would have been a long time ago, but <laughs> I'm by no means perfect. And when I can make all of my, <laughs> I saw you pulling that back yeah. literally while you were saying the words, <laughs> I want to be not as susceptible as the next Oh no, I actually I am. am. <laughs> I wanted to say I was perfect. Um, I wanted to claim the perfection mantle, but I'm looking, I can, I'd go downstairs and see my cabinet. I'm like room for improvement, but no, I, I never purchased those last minute whimsical decisions when I'm shopping on Instacart or shipped. It just doesn't happen because it's not a part of my thought process. It's not because I'm hungry and I'm in a snack mood. I'm like, Oh, that looks like a snack. Haven't seen that in a while. Let me get those zebra cakes. They were made in 1987. Those will be delicious. That's a classic vintage. Uh, <laughs> that is, it really is such an interesting thought though about, you're talking about impulse buys, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's what people call them is impulse buys. It's by taking away that ability, that temptation is just simply not there. It doesn't exist. And then if you're talking with a delivery service, like I, I know at this point we're getting Instacart to show up every roughly eight to 10 days. So you're talking at most, in our case, four deliveries per month. Whereas even with Laura's super efficient shopping, she would still always just kind of pop into the grocery store. Oh, I have to pick up one or two things. I mean, that could turn into eight to 10 times per month. And then you add all those impulse buys. Oh, I'll just pick up a six pack of this. Or, oh, like you said, some zebra cakes. Or, (laughs) man, don't those Milano cookies look amazing. Uh, what is your you vice of choice? <laughs> my vice? What, you want to know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I really do. Yeah, I think you're like you're my like a, it's you're choice. like a you're like a. Uh, I'm guessing it's like some sort of like vinegar chips. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> That's what I'm rolling out. Yeah, you're not far off. It's the old school Doritos, like the original flavored Doritos. Man, I could eat those <laughs> by the bag full. <laughs> I mean, I could never stop. Never. It's just like my absolute vice, and of course. What Molly, my youngest daughter, had us add to uh, Instacart last week was original Dorito. flavored Doritos. So yeah, I've been uh, I've been snacking in shame for the last week. <laughs> I actually see some Dorito crumbs in your new beard. They're, they're... It doesn't yeah, it doesn't come off the fingertips. Believe me. <laughs> oh, oh man. So with all the options that are out there, MK, do you have any input on the pros and the cons of one versus another? Is there, is there a clear so, winner in the, sh- in the shopping <laughs> delivery world? So my opinion is actually the Walmart pickup is the best. So Jason and I are avid Aldi enthusiasts. We will tell people all day long, go to Aldi. And a couple months ago, we were really busy and we tried Instacart. Well, as you know, if you are also an Aldi enthusiast, you have to bring your bags, your reusable bags, or you have to pay for bags. So when we did Instacart, we had to pay for bags. And I was like, I'm, it was a great convenience, but I don't want to pay for bags. I have bags. I'm going to do that. Um, So we have done the Walmart pickup. So we order everything online. We just pull into the parking space that they have at the time they tell us, and they put it in our car. And that has been great, especially for peace of mind right now, like just not wanting to go into the store, but also just wanting to get out (laughs) into the world. Uh, Like I know last week I said I was super excited just to drive to Walmart and sit in the car and then drive back. Um, So that's been really great. And there's no added markup on any of the items. So I think they're really just trying to encourage people to switch to this model. So that's been really great. And then they, we ordered like the four pound or like the two pound bag of Clementines and they're like, Oh, we only have the three pound bag. So we're upgrading you. And I was like extra pound of Clementines for free. (laughs) So there's some like really nice little benefits in there that I've really been enjoying. Um, and then to your point, yeah, like there's no impulse buys, but I did tell Jason to put extra 
tortilla chips on there and salsa because we're going to need those. <laughs> <laughs> so MK with the Walmart pickup, cause we had seen this at our local Walmart, but I, I just didn't look into it closely enough. So it's, it's curbside pickup. And or like, you don't go into the store at all. Do you just like essentially open up your trunk and they put it in or how does it work? You know, in times of coronavirus, obviously, like, are they doing this for you? What, what, what exactly is going on? Yeah. So we go onto walmart.com and the first time we did it, we were able to get a time for the very next day. Um, last time we did it, we couldn't get any available times. So the next morning we had to log on first thing to get a time three days later. Um, so the slots are filling up, but you order everything. It tells you if something's out of stock. It tells you if there's substitutes that they're going to have to swap in. We order on our laptop computer and then we have the app. So the app tells us, Hey, um, on the day that you said you wanted to pick up your order, your order's ready. And then you get in the car and you turn on location services. So it can actually see when you've arrived at Walmart and it says, Hey, we see that you've arrived. What lane are you parked in? And we were in lane seven, I think. So we said, we're in lane seven with a red car. And so the person came out and just like knocked on the window, Jason wrote down and they said, Oh, you're Jason. Like, here's the order. I think the first time when they had substitutes, they told him like, Oh, we had to switch out your regular zucchini for organic. And we were like, cool, (laughs) organic zucchini for the price of regular. Um, and then they, yeah, they just put it in the trunk and we drove away. So it was super convenient. It was super helpful just to know ahead of time if there were going to be substitutions. And then, yeah, it was helpful. And the people there were nice and friendly and very efficient at getting everything in the trunk. I'm like, go next next person. (laughs) So Brad, that's very, very cool. I know, uh, I know Ed is currently working to get Laura's recipes published as a, uh, a PDF, the $2 per person per meal recipes. And it seems to me that if you were to take this kind of intentional mindset, this anchoring process of $2 per person per meal, and you were to pair that with like an online delivery service that would prevent you from purchasing all the other impulse purchases, but kind of limit you to kind of, you know, these types of recipes, at least for the bulk of your shopping. And I know Laura, when she was making these recipes or figuring out how much to use, she very intentionally comes up with a plan on like, all right, how can I buy the right amount so I will be able to make, you know, a pretty predictable number of servings without having a ton of excess of one ingredient, you know? So if you could take that front load, that work and pair that with like some form of online delivery service, like Instacart shipped, et cetera, what would happen if you took that whole program and applied that to your life for a month? Coronavirus or no coronavirus, what would that do toward your actual food budget? And then if you wanted to take that and then pair that with maybe health and fitness goals, we're moving into the summer. A lot of us are coming out of hibernation and we're deciding, you know what? I'd like to wear sweatpants a couple days less often because I find that I'm just living in them right now. You know, maybe I'll go exercise. Maybe I'll incorporate some healthy eating habits, like do all three of those Can you imagine like over a 90 day period of time, how that would transform your life for the positive, your wallet and your waistline? Yeah, agreed. I mean, I I think that's going to be one of the big positives to come out of this entire crisis is healthier people. I mean, anecdotally in my neighborhood, I see dozens upon dozens of people walk past our house every single day. I mean, we sit outside all the time and I mean, Previously, we'd sit on the porch and nobody would walk by or in an hour, maybe one person. But now it's, I mean, like I said, dozens. I mean, we see people in our neighborhood that we've never laid eyes on before, (laughs) like never, ever, ever. So, I mean, I think there's a real chance that with this intentionality, like you said, Jonathan, I think people by necessity are cooking at home. And if you have a little plan, like you said, we're going to put this out. We've talked about the Laura's uh, top 50 recipes for such a long time. And I think she's now up to at least 30 of them. And she is very diligently working on getting the final 20 up. But I mean, these are simple, delicious meals to cook and you can make them in vast quantities. And yeah, like you said, without the impulse buys, I mean, I think people are going to save a boatload of money and be healthier. I mean, that's a combo we can all get behind. And to add some flavor to this, so people will remember that back in 2017, within the second month of 2017, we talked about how there was going to be a uh, Barrett top 50. All of us will be the first to admit that we're a little bit behind, you know, that didn't get rolled out as quickly as possible, but (laughs) 37 months later, (laughs) but I will say that choose FI's track record as an organization at putting out incredible content. And specifically I'm talking about now a K through 12 financial literacy curriculum, totally free, a financial independence, one-on-one curriculum, totally free links in the show notes for this episode, like has gotten a lot better. Those are really ambitious projects that got a lot better and they're very, very high quality. 
So one, yeah, shameless plug, just put it there for you. But two, if we as a company can do that, I think we can package up the top 50 and get it out there, right? We can create something around this. So I'm just saying the resources of this very small organization are now going to be channeled behind getting the top 50 in the universe and pairing this with your best year ever. We're committing to that. Aren't we Brad Barrett? <laughs> <laughs> yes. This time it will actually happen. I can promise that. All right. So uh, let's see. You know, I, heard, I saw on Facebook, you know, there's dolphins in the Venice Channel. Like, I don't know about that, but apparently there's neighbors actually taking walks in your neighborhood now. You know, that, that's, that's real. That's happening. We can prove that. And so people are remembering that, oh, I can do stuff outside. Oh, experiences are cool. Oh, I don't have to go somewhere and buy a ticket to a theme park in order to have fun with my family. You know, like we're, we're seeing that people are doing that now. And in the process, in this kind of dark spot, you know, they're having in many cases, an amazing time. Let's keep that going, right? Let's not leave that behind whenever this kind of social distancing quarantine leaves the ground. We, we can keep doing that and it doesn't have to cost a lot. Yeah, agreed. And I mean, the word that I've been using is creativity, right? It's amazing to see how creative humans are getting when we normally just kind of, I mean, sadly, people just kind of do the same thing. They sleepwalk through life and to a large degree. But I mean, that has been shaken maybe forever, right? And just now you're seeing tons of ways that people are being creative. I know in a couple hours now, I've got a, a Zoom call where we're going to hang out with my brother, Scott, and his wife, Kristen, and we're going to play the game uh, Code Names. Have you guys ever played that? That's fun. We, uh, it's, it's fantastic. So this is the second time we're doing it, uh, at least once a week, maybe twice a week. Now, would it be easier if they were sitting in our living room playing? Yes, of course. But they're in Canada, and we obviously can't be face to face anytime soon. So we figured out a way that we could play this game code names while doing it over zoom. And it was, you know, some fits and starts the first time, but we have a plan now and it worked out like really, really well. And yeah, time number two. And like, again, just creativity, like some of our friends had their 40th birthday this past weekend. And we obviously couldn't have the party that, you know, they were going to have planned, you know, a surprise party. And what we did was a surprise, like one of those things you see on Facebook or on Zoom, right? Like a little caravan of cars passing by, everybody leaning out the window with, you know, signs and streamers and all this stuff. And it was just, it was really, really awesome. It's like one of those things, like it almost like brought tears to my eyes that like people did this. And like, I would not have been crying at their surprise 40th <laughs> birthday party at like a brewery, right? Like it would have just been like, hey, happy birthday. Good for you. But like, you know, this was just, the ingenuity was amazing. And I think, I think we're seeing the best of humanity in a lot of senses. And, uh, it just, it makes me very hopeful. It really does. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things that's interesting is just contemplating how have things changed forever. And I mean this in a good way, right? I really like that. There's that saying, never let a crisis go to waste. I, I hate that saying, like I really do. It implies that someone's getting the short shift likely on this. There, there, it's, not a, it's not a positive thing to say in the world. Having said that, from an individual level, have you considered the fact that in mass, all of us, one of the most searched terms on the internet is how do I work from home? Like that is an incredibly popular search term that people look for. How do I work from home? And your biggest resistance, your biggest obstacle has been that your employer told you they didn't think they would get as good results. People wouldn't work as hard. There would be too much downtime. There was no way to ensure quality. All of these reasons. And then suddenly, as a result of this, in mass, employers pleaded with us, pleaded with you, please work from home. We're going to do whatever we can to support you for this period of time. We want you to work from home, so which tells you that all of the reasons that they gave you that you couldn't work from home were invalid. They weren't real, right? And so now with that information in mind, are you just going to go back to your five days a week with your ridiculously long commute working at that office inside that cubicle now that you've gotten that taste of freedom? Are you just going to go back? So right now you have this opportunity as individuals start figuring out your plan to sell this as a permanent change. Maybe not always, maybe not every single day, but can you craft a two day, you know, remote policy, a one day a week remote policy where you can have this tiny taste of freedom built into your life? How are you going to craft that pitch together? And I've been thinking about it. I don't have an employer that I need to report to and do this, but I've been thinking about what I would say. Are you interested? Should I, should I share that with you now? I mean, have you had any thoughts on this? This is, this is the new normal. This is going to happen but it's going to happen first for the individuals that ask for it. You want it, Brad? 
you're sitting back. At a, sure. Yeah. You're not yeah. sure. I, I just want to hear you squirm. So, <laughs> uh, yes, I guess. Let's People, go we're gonna we're gonna extend the silence for twenty seconds just to just to let Brad know that I'm not I'm not afraid of silence. <laughs> Ooh, that's painful. All right, Brad. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you the secrets of how to work from home, the exact script to use. But before I do that, we'll be right back. All right. Here's what I would say. First of all, to an employer, insert name here, excited that we're ramping things up. I've been talking to the team and we realized that in light of the, the economics of what's going on here, this is going to be a really bad year for all of us. And we know there's not really much that we can do about that. But I think what's important for us is we realize that there's unprecedented levels of talent out there and you want to keep the talent you have and acquire new talent. What's become increasingly clear is that people prize the ability of flexibility. They prize having the ability to, at least in some cases, work from home. And after talking about it with the team, this is something that we wanted to know if you would consider. Is there a way that in light of what's going on, in light of what's going on in our home lives, our personal lives, what's going on here at work, we could work remotely up to two days a week? Now, we'll still, obviously, we'll still be here the rest of the time, but that would transform our lives. I think it would improve company morale. We could build around that. And clearly, as you've seen, our productivity has actually gone up. What the team is producing for you has never been better. I think it would be a wonderful gesture. And I think the companies that make a choice like this will really set themselves apart for the next generation. You'll get in front of this trend as opposed to having to catch up to it later. Some variation of that. I think that's win-win. And I think that if you had, let's figure out how we can collaborate together to make this possible. I think you will get what you want. And it sounds like what a lot of you want is how can I work from home? MK, you're my employer. I bring that to you. You know, you know, I know you're going to say, well, I need to think about it. But then after you think about it, what are you going to say? Sure. Sounds great. <laughs> Let's give it a try. Works 100% of the time, all the time. You heard it here. First, choose FI. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, that, that's really it, though. And obviously, your mileage may vary with something like this. The actual verbiage that you use, how you craft it, will probably be much better than this because you'll have time to plan it out. You'll have time to practice it with someone before you go roll it in. But I do think that regardless of whether or not you, you are the one to have this conversation or not, you are going to see in mass companies move towards this because there's a lot of upshot for, for them as well, if they can pull this off. And I think, you know, the economy is a big ship and it takes a while to move it. And sometimes it takes a crisis and it's not all bad stuff that comes out of a crisis. Yeah. Jonathan, I think, I think lots of things are going to change, right? Like business travel, I think is one, you know, so many people have to travel for work and a lot of them, frankly, don't really enjoy it. They're away from their family for large swaths of the week, multiple times a, a month. I mean, I think personally that business travel is going to be reduced dramatically because we, again, we all realize that those limiting beliefs we had, just like the need to work in an office, just like the need to have a face-to-face -face business meeting for one hour and taking three days to travel there and all the expense those limiting beliefs have pretty much been blown up, right? Because you see that it's just not the case anymore. You know, you see that you can have a legitimate conversation via Zoom or via Skype or via whatever it is, right? So, yeah, I mean, I think I think we're going to see lots of changes. And, you know, it's easy to focus sometimes on the negative, obviously, of, of this entire crisis. But I think there really are these silver linings that – that we're just going to keep uncovering. And I, I think it's fun. And I, I think, I think we're going to do that here at, at casual Wednesdays. I, I like our, our new thing here. So this is cool. I might actually have to get a Snuggie in the background here, you know, just, just like something in the background to let people know <laughs> this is casual. You need to understand <laughs> the new backdrop. I like it. Hey, so we're always about actionable tips at choose of I things that you can do to make your life better. One thing that I came across that I, I, I'm embarrassed that I've never mentioned on the podcast before is, have you guys ever heard of unclaimed property? Has this ever crossed your plates at all? All right. I will take the silence as a no here. So this is one of the weirdest things that I was introduced to when I worked in uh, a corporate tax department. So you have to file these unclaimed property reports. And I was like, what the heck are these things? Basically like when companies or, or just generally speaking, there are undeposited checks. So we as a company paid some vendor and they never cashed that. Okay. That money doesn't come back to us as the company. It actually gets remitted to the state as unclaimed property so that that vendor or that individual or whomever can try to reclaim that property in the future. Okay. So it, it actually 
even though it's intuitive that it would come back to the company, it does not. All right. So this is like one of these weird things. I don't want to get into the weeds of this, but what this means in practical terms for individuals. So forget companies that's irrelevant is many of us have money that's owed to us that we have no idea about. We've completely forgotten. We never got the mail. We lost the check. We threw it out. We did whatever. Right. And there is money in our name sitting with our state. And all we have to do is go to a website, basically type in our name and voila, there's some free money like that, that it honestly is almost as simple as that. I actually, so in the most bizarre way of like finding this, I, I read this one travel reward site called one mile at a time. And they had this article about unclaimed property about two weeks ago. And we'll link this up in the show notes. They have links to the unclaimed property by state. So it's like all 50 states have a website that you can go to. It takes honestly under three minutes to put your information in. I found a sub so they don't tell you precisely, but a sub $50 check that amazon.com of all things owes me. I think this was from like some stupid website I owned a bunch of years ago. I think I was part of their affiliate program and they must owe me like $11 and 52 cents or something bizarre like that. But regardless, like I've seen people reclaim potentially thousands of dollars and it takes just a couple minutes. So again, you've got the time. There's no excuse. Just take the three minutes, go to our website, go to choose find this in the show notes, or just frankly, Google unclaimed property, Kansas or whatever state you live in, you know, South Carolina, Tennessee, whatever, like just Google it. And it takes three minutes. And this is a, a pretty cool way to get some money back. That is truly yours. This is your money that you just have not claimed. And Brad, you know what's interesting? I think I did do this because this is a this is a, a state program. I think it's aggregated at the national level, but it's a state program. But on the national website, it says one in ten, one in ten has unclaimed property. Three billion dollars, three billion dollars is returned by the states annually. I think I actually did this in twenty late twenty seventeen, and I had about <laughs> about fifteen dollars. So uh, I was part of the aggregate, but uh, certainly worth doing. If you have never done it, you'll likely find something in there. All right, that's our first casual Wednesday. So going forward, we're gonna have a slightly different cadence here. Mondays, new topic, guest or idea. Wednesdays, potential deep dive with the option to keep it casual. Fridays, mailbag. Your questions, our answers. Stay tuned, stay subscribed. We'll see you next time as we continue to go down the road less traveled.